The number one question that I get from Shrimp Curious is why are my shrimp dying? So today I thought it was a good idea being Shrimp Saturday to dive into some of the most common illnesses and things that you can experience in shrimp keeping. We're going to talk about Caridina and Neocaridina. Caridina, we're going to start there because there's a lot fewer things that can go wrong. But Neos, they do have some different parasites, some bacterial infections, some things that you want to watch out for. We're going to dive into all that today and give you the complete breakdown of all the things you might experience when keeping shrimp. What is going on, Shrimp Keepers? This is Rob with FlipAquatics.com. Today is Shrimp Saturday. That means we are diving into some very specific topics for all you Shrimp Keepers out there and to give you guys more information. And so today we are talking about shrimp illnesses. We're gonna start in Caridina and then work our way through and get to Neo Caridina. And hopefully you guys pick up on a lot of information today, but that's what we're talking about. So let's dive right into today's video. So let's start with Caridina shrimp. So we're looking at some blue bolts right now. Now Caridina shrimp, the things that you have to make sure that you're doing correctly first is one, you need to have the proper setup. So for us, it's the Brightwell substrate, it's the matten filter, it's the RO water remineralized with shrimple, uh, GH only, you don't want cage in here. So assuming that you're doing all that right, that's where we can move on to the next step. Now there's really only one type of illness that you're ever gonna run into with uh, Caridina shrimp because they really don't get parasites, they really don't have diseases. Now there's small deformities in the shrimp. Um, we're not gonna talk about that today, but there are some small deformities that you can look for and you can actually call the shrimp. Um, for example, it's like a short carapace. But again, we won't talk about that today. We'll bring that up in a future video. But today we're talking about illnesses. So the only thing that these shrimp can actually get is a bacterial infection. Now there's two types of bacterial infection that they can get. Normally in shrimp, you'd be able to tell a bacterial infection by looking at them and there's gonna be a milky color of their tissue. Now, blue bolts, these ones in particular, are like super blue, have very dark colors, and their shell is solid. So when I look at these shrimp, I actually can't see their tissue. What I'm seeing is the color of their shell. So I can't look at these guys and be like, oh, they're, their color's off, they have a milky color, I need to treat them for bacterial infection. Can't do that. So the way that I determine if they have a bacterial infection is if I'm having unexplained deaths that are getting worse and not better and every other box is checked off. That's how I can determine if I have a bacterial infection and the other bacterial infection that you're going to see in these guys, which these guys don't have it, but you can look for it, it's called rust spot disease. Rust spot disease is literally what it sounds like. It's little patches of what look like rust, and they're going to be like a red color, and then they're going to spread throughout the body. And it almost looks like they have little um, sores on their side. Rust spot disease is a type of bacteria that's actually eating away at the shell of the shrimp. And so if you have those two types of bacterial infection, and again, the one is the rust spot. The other one is unexplained deaths. If everything else checks out, there's one thing that you need to do. And I actually have it over here. So this is what we do. It's called Marison and Marison 2. 99% of the time, you can get away with using Marison. Every once in a while, you get a really, really tough bacteria that you just can't get rid of with Marison. And that's why we always use Marison 2. Um, I, I believe it's type A and type B bacteria which is just the number, um, I believe this one has one cell wall and this one has two cell wall as far as the type of bacteria that it kills. And so we dose this. Now, I don't want you to go to the store and just buy some Marison, start dosing your tank. You need to know how we dose it. So um, I don't follow any of the instructions in the back. What you're gonna do is you're gonna look to see what it recommends for dosing. So this one, it says one level scoop per 90 gallons. These tanks are 20 gallons. Obviously, we're not going to do that. We'd have to really scale it back. But whatever it says for dosing a 20 gallon tank, you want to cut that in half. And then we dose on day one. We don't dose on day two. On day three, we dose again. Day four, we clean the filter and do a water change. So there's a couple of things you need to know about antibiotics or bacterial medication is in this filter, we have all of our live bacteria. That is good bacteria, and obviously there's bad bacteria in there if the shrimp are dying. So when we treat the bad bacteria, we're also killing the good bacteria. So we can talk about this in a future video, but you will actually need to recycle this aquarium when you're done treating. So that's the unfortunate thing. With Caridina shrimp, the pH is less than seven, which means ammonia is non-lethal to your shrimp. 
um, at least not in low quantities. If you get really high quantities, it could be lethal. And so cycling a caridina shrimp, water shrimp in there, while it's not ideal, it is possible. Um, you could be adding something like, I think this is our bottle. So Florinbacter 1, we get this from Brightwell. I know we got a big old label on it, but this is what it is. Um, so you could be dosing something like that. Again, we'll talk about cycles in a completely different video, but I did want you guys to know if you are treating for a bacterial infection, you do need to know that you're gonna kill the cycle of your aquarium using the Marison and you need to recycle your aquarium. So Caridina shrimp, pretty easy as far as identifying illnesses. The rust spot's pretty easy to find. And if you have unexplained deaths, that's pretty easy to notice as well. And so that's how you can really dive in there. Now, before you go and treat your tank with Marison, before you get to that step, if you're having unexplained deaths, the thing that I'd recommend is testing your ammonia, your NO2 and your NO3. You wanna make sure that all those things are not too high. Um, again, they're non-lethal in a tank with a pH of less than seven. So you wanna make sure those aren't really high. If they are really high, you need to deal with that because that could be causing your losses. So that's Caridina in a nutshell. Let's head over to new Caridina. There's a lot more to take in here, but I'm gonna break it down for you guys and make it as simple as possible. So obviously Caridina is, pretty easy when it comes to like bacterial and stuff like that. Like there's very few things that actually could go wrong as long as you have the right parameters. Now, this is our Neo Caridina room. There's like, I wanna say close to 60 ponds in here, about 200 gallons a piece. We use the IBC totes, best investment ever. If you have room to do an IBC tote and you wanna keep shrimp, you can breed a ton of shrimp in one of these IBC totes. In this room, Neo Caridinas, there's a lot more things that can go wrong. So. Um, to give you a little bit of like the backstory, um, where these shrimp are bred is mostly in Taiwan um, and around the, around the world. There's very few actually bred in the United States. Um, Caridina shrimp are bred indoors in tanks because they're a higher value shrimp. They get more money for them. Now, Neo Caridina are bred outdoor in ponds. Like there's very little care that goes into them because they're a much cheaper shrimp. And so what you get is you get all the different parasites, bacterial infections, um, algae infections, uh, which is crazy parasitic algae. We'll talk about that. So there's a lot more that can go wrong for Neocaridina. And so that's where like, if you're buying just randomly online, um, you're going to your pet store, there, there's a bunch of things that you wanna watch out for. Now, granted, I'm gonna show you some equipment today that I know you guys don't have access to, but I'll explain to you a way that you can do it at home. And so I'll give you kind of the rundown. We'll start with bacterial because we just talked about it with the Caridina shrimp. So we'll use that as like our baseline and then we'll move through from there. But I just wanted to preface you that there's a lot more that can go wrong with the Neo Caridina side. That's why I always say like, if, if you want something that is like kind of easy, if you're willing to spend the initial investment, Caridina shrimp is the way to go. I'm not discouraging you from Neo Caridina because I think they're great. They survive in a lot more parameters that you're keeping your fish in. And so, just know the facts, make the best decision you can. All right, if this is your guys' first time here, I just wanna jump in and say, hit that subscribe button. We do these videos all the time and we wanna build our community to inspire and educate fellow hobbyists and share more information. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today's video. Let's get right back to it. So here's what I did. I, I came to this pond. This is how we keep our Neo Caridina shrimp. This one is cherry shrimp. Uh, we keep about, I don't know, a thousand to 2000 shrimp in a pond, just depending on what's going on. And so I caught a bunch for you. These are cherry shrimp. So the thing that you're gonna notice about these guys is when I look at these, most of them are pretty translucent. Like I can see into their, their actual tissue. Uh, their shell isn't a solid color like the Caridina shrimp are. So I can look at this one. I can actually put it up to a light and kind of take a look at them. And I could tell whether they have milky tissue or not. So on these guys, it's really easy to identify if you have a bacterial infection. Another mistake that you don't want to make is when shrimp die, they turn white. It's just a normal part of their death is they turn white or red. So a lot of people would be like, oh my God, there's a dead shrimp and it's solid white. I have a bacterial problem. Like, no, no, shrimp can die and turn white. That's normal, that's a normal process. And so you only want to look at ones that are living. So like if your dead shrimp's white, normal, don't treat your tank with Marison. But if you look at this, if I see one that actually has a bacterial infection, like a nice milky, not nice, but a solid milky color, then I'm gonna wanna treat this tank with Marison. So all these guys look good. 
These guys have been here since September 23rd. So they've been through our quarantine process for a long time. We've had them for over two months and uh, they're looking good. There's a bunch of babies in here. So this is always step one is making sure that there's nothing wrong with the shrimp. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna really get in close and take a close look at these guys to see if there's anything else that you can notice. So if you're getting random shrimp online, there's, there's two things that you need to watch out for um, for parasites. So parasites is kind of the next section that I want to talk about because this is kind of like our normal step. Like we would catch the shrimp um, after they've cleared quarantine. Like this is our everyday process. We'd catch them, we'd bring them over here and then we do the next step just to prevent like if we missed anything on the parasite side. So first step, if you're at home, is you want to look at your shrimp if you just got them in you're gonna look at them and you're gonna look at their forehead. So they have what's called a rostrum that comes right off between their two eyes. Um, and on that forehead, if they have the parasite, it's called vorticilla um, or scuderilia is the two, two different terms that people use for it. It's pretty much the same thing. They're little worms that like suction to their head. So in their face area is where you're gonna see it. So you're gonna look at these guys and obviously, you know, a manual inspection is pretty difficult because like, shrimp are only like half of an inch. Um, but you would see these little um, worm-like things on the front of it. It almost looks like fuzz or little hairs. So you're gonna look for that and you may see it, you may not. And if you don't see it, or even if you do, you wanna look for something else as well. In their gills, which is in the middle of their body, like right where their tail starts, go a little bit forward um, and split like their front part of their body in half and that's where their gills are. And they are gonna have, if there are parasites present, they're gonna have like these little white streaks. And what those white streaks are, if you zoom in really close with a camera, it's actually little eggs. Those little eggs are the vorticilla or the scuderilia. They're laying eggs and it's getting sucked up into their gills. And then they're gonna hold those vorticilla until they hatch and then that's gonna populate on their body or it's gonna get into the water column and then it's gonna go to other shrimp. And so, that's two ways to identify whether you potentially have parasites. So a lot of times people get shrimp in, imported, they'll kill the initial uh, parasites, but they can't kill the eggs until the eggs hatch. So they'll kill the initial parasites, and then now the eggs hatch, the parasites grow, not good. So if you're just buying shrimp randomly, or honestly, if you're just buying shrimp in general, Neocaridina, it's always recommended to quarantine your shrimp. So you get them in, the best thing that you could do is give the shrimp a couple days of stability, so like three, four days, and then you're gonna catch all these shrimp out. So I would actually um, catch these out with a net, and then this is exactly what it says it is, salt. But it's not just straight salt, obviously there's water in there. So we do a combination, I'll put this down below um, in the description. I believe, I, I don't have it in front of me, that's why I'll put it down below, but I believe it's like one cup of salt to like six cups of water, and it's not any salt. It's aquarium salt. So we use Fritz aquarium salt, not to be confused with saltwater salt. Um, API also has aquarium salt that I'm sure a lot of you have seen before. It comes in like the milk cartons. So you're gonna get that salt, you're gonna mix it in here, you're gonna net all these shrimp out, and you're gonna put the shrimp in here, just like in the net, hold it in here for like a minute to two minutes. They're all gonna float at the surface or barely swim around. They're fine, I promise you. We, we do this every day. You're gonna give them up to two minutes, I wouldn't go longer than two minutes, in the salt mixture and do that every other day for like a week. So you do it three, four times over an eight day period. Um, and that's gonna make sure that you're killing the parasites because the parasites don't like the salt, they usually fall off and they die. Um, that's gonna ensure you kill any live parasites and also any parasites that may hatch during that eight day period. So that's the safest way to do it. You can manually inspect your shrimp first. If you don't see it, you don't have to do it. We salt dip every single shrimp that comes in here. And before it leaves here, it all gets salt dipped just as a final step to make sure that parasites aren't getting through. So that's what you need to know about parasites. Next is the parasitic algae. And this one is a big one. A lot of people talk about it. So a lot of people refer to it as elobiopsidae. It's not technically elobiopsidae but that's what we can refer to it today. I'm gonna to show you our setup to see, to show you what we do for it, and then you guys can try doing something similar at home. So this is our setup. One, we have a Kessel light, we have a DIY light box. We got our GoPro with a macro lens on it, and then we got a TV screen, which is hooked to our GoPro. So we literally have this set up to where we take our catch cup, we hang it there, 
And then one thing that we did is we have taken our TV and we have adjusted the settings to make sure that if they do have this parasitic algae, it almost glows on the screen. So we've gotten it pretty under control, so I doubt we will actually find it, um, but it is something that comes in on shrimp. So what it looks like, the parasitic algae, it usually starts like right here. If you look at this shrimp, it'll start right at their back two legs um, and it will just start as like a green, uh, almost like a green fuzz or a green moldy thing. It's, it's like little cells growing out of it. And so, first of all, let me explain to you what it is before I get into how you identify it. So everyone refers to it as elobiopsidae. It's not elobiopsidae. That's a completely different thing. What it is, is, is the parasitic algae. So what happens is where they're kept in Taiwan, outdoor in ponds, um, I believe it originates from birds. So birds are like flying over, they're pooping into the water, and then this algae, parasite, whatever, gets into the water. The shrimp obviously are gonna eat that. And it, don't quote me on this, like I'm just giving you what I believe is happening. I don't know for a fact, I've never been to Taiwan. Um, so anyway, they eat that, they get it, they ingest it. Now, what's happening is like, at some point, they can be triggered that this algae is actually gonna start growing from them. So um, ways that you can help kill the algae is low light, um, good healthy water parameters over course of like, you know, a couple months will stabilize it and hopefully it won't ever come out. Um, and then, you know, you're gonna likely see it within the first like month of having them if you have like highlight in your tank. And if you ever notice it, you're gonna wanna pull that shrimp out immediately, quarantine it, um, there is ways to treat it. It's just not very cost effective. So I would just let it live its best life. Um, you could look up online. There's like melakite green and methylene blue that you can treat it with that will actually kill it. Um, but regardless of that, you identify it, um, you pull it out. The only way that this stuff spreads that I have found, and we've, we've worked with this for a long time, is if one of these shrimp have it and the shrimp dies and all the other shrimp, the first thing they eat is that algae. It must taste really good. They eat it immediately. And now all of them have it, but it's only, the only way you can know they have it is as soon as they start getting it. So you're gonna look at your shrimp. The first place you're gonna look for is right behind their last two legs. So I'm looking at all these shrimp. I don't see anything wrong. Every once in a while, they'll start getting it in the middle of their legs and it'll start very, very softly. Um, are very small, like a very, very small portion. And then it will end up spreading to like the whole back half of their body. And so it, it usually always starts anytime that I've ever seen it at their back two legs for whatever reason. And so all these shrimp look good. So we, we inspect all of our shrimp this way to ensure that they don't have it. Um, we always hold them up, you know, to a like too. So if you're at home, what I would recommend is get a glass bowl that has really good clarity on it. Um, and then you can actually uh, shine a light down over top of them and look, look at them from the side and you can usually identify it right away if you have it. And then if you're watching your shrimp, don't get it confused with buried females. A lot of people do that. A buried female is one that is carrying eggs on the backside of their tail. Um, those are completely round. This type of thing is not round at all. It almost looks like a fuzz, a growth. I'm sure Emily can find a picture and overlay it in the video at some point. And so that's what you're looking for. And so that's the most notorious neocaridine illness. I've never seen this in caridina shrimp, so you don't have to worry about it. And I've never had parasites in neo or caridina shrimp either. So those are just two things you don't you don't really have to worry about for the caridina side. But this is the last thing that I look for um, for neocaridina. And that's all the illnesses that you can experience. Now, I'm sure there might be like some random thing that maybe I'm not thinking about. There's still like things in your tank like planaria, uh, vorticilla. Let me think if there's anything else. I mean, there's like, I mean, you might get leeches. So we can address all that stuff in a future video. But as far as like actual sicknesses, this gives you a really good idea of what you guys can look for at home and also how you can treat it if it's treatable. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and M as we film this video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. As always, God bless. We'll catch you guys on the flip side.